Good afternoon. I'm here with Mark Sloan, our emergency management coordinator, and Dave Barry, the Harris County administrator. Today we met with representatives from ERCOT and uh, the PUC to receive a briefing on what they're working on and to make sure that we're doing everything we can to prepare for anything that comes our way in the next few months. And I'll provide an update on what we discussed in just a minute. But first I want to remind folks that our reality here in Harris County and really throughout the nation in many ways is these weather emergencies, extreme weather, is becoming more and more common and more and more of a new normal we have to get used to. Although we cannot prevent disasters from happening, we can do our best to be prepared. With regard to this summer, we see two issues that I want to make sure residents are aware of and focused on. The first one is the risk of hurricanes and storms. We know that that's a threat to our region. We're just 50 feet above sea level. The other one, uh, a possible issue that we can foresee, is extreme heat. I don't have to tell anyone it's been really hot this week. And it's not just this week. Last month in May was Houston's second hottest month of May ever on record. The normal June high temperature here is 92 degrees, but this week has seen multiple days where we got to 102. Forecast, forecasters are predicting a hotter than normal summer this year, and that's something that we all need to be aware of. What's different as well this year, of course, is a lingering concern because of the increase in energy demand and that with energy demand, uh, with hotter temperatures, that there could be power outages, that there could be an issue with the grid. It's understandable that people have anxiety about the grid and power outages. We all lived through the winter storm and it was horrible and we're still reeling from it. And I understand that the community is concerned and I conveyed that to the PUC and ERCOT leaders. So here's what Harris County is doing. I want folks to know that we have an incredible team of professionals right here at our emergency operations center, battle tested, who are working every day to practice and prepare for this kind of a situation, who are working with first responders all around the county, and whose job it is to think about how we can do better and make sure we're ready for that. They don't just show up right now when it's hurricane season, when it's the summer. That is what they do every single day of the year. Disasters are chaotic by definition, and so I'm not going to say that they're preparing to where everything would be perfectly smooth, but we are better prepared than ever before. We've conducted over 100 emergency drills with partners across the county, law enforcement, nonprofits, others, many specifically on this issue of possible power issues. I've also asked our emergency management team to identify partners like faith based communities, nonprofits. Uh, other community organizations, county facilities that could potentially expand our network of cooling centers and to make sure that they've got backup generators and um, that we have those mapped according to different needs and uh, overlaid with other sources of information. We're also working to make sure county facilities are prepared in the event of power outages, checking generator readiness, identifying pumping stations that can act as a backup, and so forth. We're working closely with Centerpoint, and they've done quite a bit. They've acquired over 15 new backup mobile generators that they could deploy to neighborhoods in the event of an outage. They didn't have that during the winter freeze. Each one has 30 megawatts, which could power 6,000 homes. Traditionally, Centerpoint focuses exclusively on distribution, power distribution. But now they're, they're allowed to, and they have capacity, to also produce during an emergency. It's not a silver bullet, but it's an added tool, and it's going to save lives in the event of an outage. You might remember during the winter storm rolling back out, uh, blackouts took too long and were unpredictable. Since then, we've asked Centerpoint, and they've been working on developing a strategy to better target where and how to shed power, and that's something that I continue to ask them, to be 
very specific about making sure that vital areas are not part of the rolling outages and to the extent that we can identify vulnerable populations, that those are not included either, that we rotate so that no one community is saddled with um, consistent outages as we saw in many ways during the winter freeze. They've also upgraded their communications ability and I know the other stakeholders have worked on that too to better convey vital information to the community, social media, their alerting systems, etc. Of course, ultimately when it comes to power, we rely on the state's grid and that's where, where ERCOT and the PUC come in. I just met along with my emergency management team and county leadership with the executive director of the Public Utility Commission, Thomas Gleason, and the CEO and interim president of ERCOT, Brad Jones. This morning, they both advised us that they've taken steps to be prepared for the stress in the system, that they're working on more steps. I'm eager for their work to continue so we can be truly resilient. Both leaders assured me that they are comfortable that the grid will remain reliable this summer. They anticipate high demand. They anticipate possible calls for conservation. They've already issued a couple of those, but they don't anticipate rotating outages like what we had uh, during the winter freeze. That doesn't mean we don't prepare, and I want to be very clear about that. For one, there's always the possibility of a perfect storm. If there's additional demand and a really hot day, then generation goes out. My position on this is trust but verify, and I do that on behalf of our community. We know the grid is not where we want it to be, and although there's more work to be done at the state level, they tell us that there have been improvements. We always hope for the best, but we have to prepare for the worst, and that's why I'm here today and I want to make sure residents know what they need to do to help us as well as part of the emergency management team. In the short term, what folks need to do is gear up for the hot weekend. We are working with the homeless outreach team and partners to ensure the homeless community has a place to cool off. We've been doing that throughout the hot days and we're going to continue doing that as we see hot days coming. If you need relief, um, we're using our libraries as cooling centers. So if you feel too hot, I encourage you to visit a library. You can visit a mall. Of course, there are many places where you could cool off. But if you need uh, to visit one of our, our, our libraries, check readyharris.org for the various locations. They're all throughout the county. As far as the long term, at the end of the day, being prepared for summer weather, just as all the other possible disasters, is a shared responsibility. We have the emergency management team here but we all need to do our part. And every member of this community is a first responder as well. So, so here's a couple of things um, we need folks to do. First is to listen, listen to trusted sources of information. Just keep an eye out with local media, um, trusted sources online. Reddy Harris has a social media account, so make sure you're following uh, our emergency operations center. If the state asks you to conserve energy over the summer, please do so. If you have a backup generator, make sure it's got enough fuel, test it regularly. Uh, if you don't have one, consider, consider getting one. Municipal utility districts need to test generators to ensure they're working so they can continue providing services to the communities they serve in the event of an outage. As always, visit readyharris.org for more information. It's updated right now with summer weather tips. Worth remembering, don't forget the pets. Don't forget to have your preparedness plan. Whether it's hurricane season, whether it's an outage due to summer weather, you want to make sure that you have a plan, that you have a kit at home, that you're listening to sources of, of, of trusted sources of information. And so with that, um, I will repeat my remarks in Spanish. Uh, grateful for this community. We're all here and working for you. Um, and I want to make sure that everybody knows what we're focused on. Hoy me reuní con representantes del Consejo de Confiabilidad Eléctrica de Texas, ERCOT, y con el PUC, la Comisión de Servicios Públicos del Estado. 
La realidad en el condado Harris y también alrededor de la nación es que los fenómenos del clima son más y más algo normal, algo rutinario. La verdad es que estamos viviendo en una era de desastres más severos, más frecuentes y no podemos prevenir esos desastres, pero sí podemos prepararnos. En cuanto a este verano veo dos temas, dos posibilidades eh, de retos. Primero, como siempre, la amenaza de huracanes y tormentas. Esa es un, una posibilidad previsible. También el calor extremo. No le tengo que decir a nadie que las temperaturas han subido mucho estos últimos meses, está haciendo calor y los números demuestran eso también. El mes de mayo, que acaba de pasar, mayo del 2022, fue el segundo mayo más caliente en la historia de nuestro condado, desde que hemos tenido medidas. Eh, normalmente la temperatura en junio no, eh, es 92 grados, pero esta semana hemos llegado varios días a 102. Se predice que este verano va a ser más cálido de lo normal. Además, existe la preocupación de que dado el, el incremento en, en la necesidad de energía, que pueda haber apagones. Y entiendo que la comunidad tenga ansiedad después de haber vivido la helada del año pasado. Entonces, eso es lo que estamos haciendo en cuanto al condado Harris. Eh, primero, Quiero que sepan que tenemos un equipo increíble aquí en el Centro de Operaciones de Emergencia. Están trabajando todos los días, no solamente ahora que es verano, ahora que es temporada de huracanes, sino siempre. Y han hecho muchísimos eh, ejercicios, simulacros, más de 100 de emergencia. Simulacros de emergencias con socios en todo el condado, policía, personal médico, etc. He dirigido nuestro equipo de manejo de emergencias a identificar eh, comunidades, iglesias, organizaciones sin fines de lucro, eh, edificios del condado y otros que podamos utilizar para, para, como centros donde las personas puedan eh, estar pues, con mejor temperatura, un poco más de aire acondicionado si lo fueran a necesitar durante este verano. También estamos trabajando para que los edificios del condado estén preparados en cuanto a la posibilidad de apagones. Hemos trabajado con CenterPoint. Ellos han adquirido 15 generadores móviles, los cuales no tenían antes, no se les permitía generar electricidad, pero ahora sí lo pueden hacer. Esto, cada generador móvil puede ofrecer electricidad a 6.000 hogares. Entonces, eso nos ayudaría si hubiera un apagón. No es una solución mágica, pero ayuda. Si recuerdan, durante el apagón del año pasado, la helada, hubieron apagones rotativos. Ciertas comunidades sufrieron de apagones por muchísimo tiempo. Entonces, hemos estado trabajando con CenterPoint para identificar cuáles son las comunidades que ofrecen servicios importantísimos como hospitales, las comunidades vulnerables, personas mayores, por ejemplo, personas enfermas, para que ellos no tengan apagones y además asegurarnos que estén rotando esos apagones. Seguimos pidiéndoles que continúen mejorando esa estrategia. Además, tanto CenterPoint como estas entidades estatales han trabajado en mejorar sus sistemas de comunicaciones. Finalmente, la fuente de energía es el Estado, la red del Estado. Entonces, por eso me reuní con el liderazgo el día de hoy, hablé con el, ejecutivo, el director ejecutivo del PUC y con el presidente eh, presente de ERCOT. Ambos me dijeron que se están tomando varios pasos para prepararse para más presión en el sistema. También me han dicho que están, se sienten seguros que nuestra red eléctrica va a subsistir este verano. Me lo han asegurado. Eso no significa que no nos preparamos nosotros comunidad. Siempre hay una posibilidad de que haya demasiada demanda y además mucho calor y no haya suficiente producción. Mi posición es verificar lo que ellos digan. Sabemos que la red eléctrica no está exactamente donde queremos que esté. Sabemos que todavía están trabajando por mejorar a nivel estatal. Sabemos que, aunque dicen que hay mejoras, que debemos esperar siempre a lo mejor, pero debemos prepararnos y, y para cualquier desastre, y por eso estoy aquí hoy día. Entonces, ¿qué deben hacer como comunidad? Primero, a corto plazo, va a ser un fin de semana muy caliente. Estamos trabajando para, para ayudar a personas sin hogar. 
a que tengan un sitio pues para que no reciban apoyo. Si usted necesita alivio del calor, puede utilizar nuestras bibliotecas como centros de refresco y enfriamiento. Puede buscar la lista de bibliotecas en readyharris.org. Puede visitar un mall también, cualquier sitio con aire acondicionado. En cuanto a largo plazo, todos como residentes tenemos que poner de nuestra parte. Escuchen a las fuentes confiables de información. Si el Estado les pide conservar energía, ya lo han hecho un par de veces, por favor háganlo. Eso ayuda a todos, todos los vecinos. Si tiene un generador de respaldo, asegúrese que tenga suficiente combustible, pruébelo regularmente. Si no tiene generador de respaldo, considere el obtener uno. Los distritos de utilidad municipal se les pide que también eh, evalúen sus generadores. Visite readyhairs.org para más información. Síganos en las redes sociales. Tenga un kit si no tuviera electricidad por dos a tres días. También piense en sus mascotas. Eh, y como siempre, tenga un plan para con su familia. Entonces, eh, eso es lo que tengo para el día de hoy. Esperamos que sea un verano tranquilo, pero no podemos, da, no podemos confiarnos. Tenemos que prepararnos. We'll take questions now, and if you guys have questions for um, Administrator Barry or, or uh, Mark Sloan, let us know as well. Judge, I have a question. It's related to gas prices. Of course, um, it's tough for a lot of people right now. Gas prices almost five bucks a gallon. Uh, by the way, it's Joel Eisenbaum from Channel 2. So last week we were... Last week we reported that there was a possibility Hectra could sort of suspend tolls while gas prices are so high. Do you know where that project is? Is that going to happen? First, I want to acknowledge the, the problem that the high gas prices are causing. Uh, it is, it is um, untenable for many families. Obviously, the, the, the broader issues with prices are very concerning for the entire community. Just to point out, since 2015, we have waived toll fee increases. During COVID, we did pause those increases. Uh, we, we did pause the fees in the toll road. And we also have to balance the various uh, projects that we cover with toll road fees. For example, we just talked about hurricane season. We're using a good chunk of toll road money to finish flood control projects that were not properly budgeted for in the flood bonds. So that's what we're balancing, right? And that's something we're going to continue to look at. We do continue to have many, many programs to support residents who are in financial straits. So we're continuing to distribute tens of millions of dollars. We're over 200 million at this point uh, in rental assistance for landlords, uh, for renters, direct financial assistance, um, all kind of support systems. We've worked also to make sure that, um, that, that we're maximizing the tax breaks that people get in terms of their property taxes. So we're going to continue looking at this. At this time, it's not something we're in a position to, but it doesn't mean we're going to keep looking at it. Okay, so no, that's not on the horizon, suspending tolls? Not, not right now. Uh, not right now. But we are doing so many other things, and it's really that, that issue of, you know, there's so many county programs that we need to continue doing, particularly now that folks are in a, in a tough situation. Is there any, just one follow-up, is there any guarantee that tolls won't rise while gas prices are where they are? We have not, we have not had an increase since 2015. So that, absolutely, we're going to continue with. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Great. Thank you so much.